for you! Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I am a shameless fan of getting free stuff. Especially free awesome upgrade kits for some of the best blasters that have ever been. So when NF Strike reached out to me and offered me a Strife kit and a Rapid Strike kit, I jumped on it. Uh, however, I had such big ambitious plans for the kits that I wasn't able to implement them right away, and so these have been sitting on a shelf for a couple of months now, and NF Strike reached out and said, hey, hey, where's our video? I'm like, ah, it's a good point. So. I'm gonna throw something together real quick to demonstrate the functionality of the two kits. I will eventually do full builds using them, but that will be another day. We will start with the Strife kit, because it should be the simpler one. Now this is a Select Fire kit, and it's very similar to one that I have reviewed in the past. It's the simpler version of the kit that I have in this one. The link to this video will be down in the description. This is the high-end version. It's got a little uh, display screen is really the only major difference between the two. Whereas this one does not have a display screen. Um, so it's probably a little bit simpler. I think this one also doesn't use sensors to detect the darts. I, I'm not sure what it uses, but it uses something. So I'm gonna quickly throw this in this empty strife shell I had lying around and we'll see if we can get it to uh, demonstrate its functionality. So I got it wired up. Here is single fire. Every trigger pull does one. Here's oh, wrong way. Burst. And here is full auto. So yeah, works beautifully. Arm always returns. You got your three settings. Lovely. This uh, this is my simple kit. I'm not entirely sure what this does. Uh, I'm sure there is a guide somewhere. Oh look, configuration description standard. So it's got the instructions on how to use it. It's all based on uh, green and red LEDs and blinking and all of that. So you can tell that's the the, the trade-off to not having a screen is that you can change that. But you can change things like the rate of fire, the FPS, the... Uh, I think in there you change whether you have a 2S or a 3S LiPo. It will uh, warn you. It, it, there is a, a voltmeter built in, so it'll tell you when your battery is low. Pretty cool. Pretty cool little kit. Uh, I look forward to actually doing the full build with it. Um, and uh, having some more select fire strifes because they are just a fabulous blaster. So, all right, well, I'm gonna move on to the rapid strike kit and demonstrate how awesome it is. As soon as I clean this up, here we go. This is definitely the one I'm more excited about. I've seen some reviews on this kit and it's, it's amazing. Uh, it is a heads-up display select fire kit. It has all kinds of bells and whistles. Uh, and I am uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing if I can make it do its thing. Um, I will start out with my one complaint. Why on earth did they make it red? The rapid strike was came in blue and orange. They could have made it blue and it would have matched most rapid strikes, or they could have made it orange and it would have matched either this or the Stratahawk, but they went with red. Luckily, it looks like it's all screwed together, so I could probably take it apart and paint it if I were willing to take that risk, which I am. Um, so I probably will do that when I actually go to do the full build. So let's take a look at this thing. We have a trigger assembly with both our rev and our fire switches all nicely built in. Lovely, lovely. Dig that. We've got some kind of a control slash battery board going on here. Very good. Uh, there's your wires, wires for your flywheel cage, very nice. And then we have our even more compact pusher mechanism. It looks, it's basically the same thing as a regular rapid strike, except that um, it uses one of these small stepper motors, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's our third switch that gets pressed when this comes back. So that's how they're doing pusher arm control. It's wired just like a rapid strike. 
Um, and then presumably they've got code that tells it how many, you know, cycle three times. So that's definitely pretty cool. Where does all of our stuff plug in? Okay, I've got it installed. It's actually extremely easy to install. It is pretty much just drop in. The only thing and the shell that I had to modify was the jam door. I had to cut a little notch out. And it won't actually currently open. I probably could make it where it did if I did the cable management a little bit differently, but um, yeah, it's in. It's fairly straightforward. The, the instructions are available online. You can find it in the in the link uh, where that'll be in the description. Um, yeah. Now, what what isn't as clear is all of the various modes and functions. This thing has a lot of adjustable settings, and I'm still trying to figure all of them out. Okay, got the shell together now. We're gonna put in a LiPo. We got a nice big 3S. I ended up going with uh, Kraken motors just cause I had some, and uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about the basic features. So to turn it on, you simply pull the trigger. We'll see how well you can actually see that. And that's the reticle. It gives you elevation as well as pitch. Uh, and it also gives you your battery and, and what mode you're currently in. It's got the switch here has four modes. You've got safe, single fire, triple uh, uh, burst, and full auto. And I believe you can change what the burst is on the first two. Let me actually check that. You can set your ammo capacity. I've got it set at 22 because I run Worker 22s. Uh, you can set whether it uh, does uh, ammo di display. You can have it basically have an ammo counter that tells you what your magazine capacity should be. Uh, you can set the voltage on your pusher motor. And then I'm going to change the mode. So mode one, I'm going to set for two. And mode two, I'm going to set for four. And I think what that does is it will change the semi auto to two round burst and the select for the burst mode to a four round burst. Uh, and I'm going to test that. And uh, yeah. There's all sorts of other things that you can tweak in there. There's also some kind of a video game mode that I don't know how I accidentally activated it at one point, and I can't figure out how to activate it now. Um, and I'm sure you, you might be able to change that HUD so it's not all spinny and kind of distracting. You can definitely turn the brightness down. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, and then it's not quite as uh, glaring. You can also, it, the front flips down and it has kind of a, a light and dark mode. So that's also handy. And, uh, yeah. I'm gonna... I'm a plank with it. First I'll take it to the chronograph and see what kind of numbers I'm getting out of it. I haven't, you know, really optimized it. I just threw wheels and a cage in and motors. Um, I also don't actually have a battery door at the moment, but, uh... Life will go on. All right, I'm gonna load it. We're gonna go to the chronograph. Right, here, the chronograph. I can see how much ammo I've got in there. I've got a 22 and uh, I've got it set on my mode one, which I think will now be a two round burst. We gonna find out. Round burst and I'm hitting uh, 140 with the first uh, and around 133 with the second. This should now be a four round burst. And it is. So sure enough, you can set your burst to the two different bursts to whatever you want and then full auto. That's pretty cool. That is pretty, pretty cool. All right. Well, I've still got daylight, I'm gonna go get some range time in with it because I want to plink. We'll see what kind of accuracy I'm getting with this thing because who knows? To the range! Right, I'm here 
on the range. I've got four mags all loaded up. I've got mode one set back to single shot, mode two to three round burst, and then full auto. I'm gonna start with some uh, semi-auto and see how accurate this thing is. Not too bad, acceptable, acceptable. Let's try some burst mode. See what that does for us. Come on, I got one more round in there. Don't be giving me that. You can change the threshold on the uh, ammo detector so that it won't give you a grief. You could probably turn it off altogether. I would imagine. All right, let's do some full auto. We got a whole target over here, Steve. I dig it. I dig it. Let's do a little bit of each. A little single. A little burst. And whatever I've got left, full. I got them all. Got them all. Nope, oh, still got a couple of rounds. Rounds complete. This, this is entirely too cool. Not only is it a very, a very functional select fire kit, the burst mode, I'm, I'm, I like that rate of fire. It's not ridiculous. You don't dump your whole mag instantly. Now, some people might want a higher rate of fire. You might be able to increase it. Might, maybe, I don't know. But uh, for my purposes, that is really quite fantastic. And the whole, HUD thing. I don't know. Hey, can I can I get it on the screen? Aha! It's it's just some sci-fi shenaniganery of the highest order, and I love it. Um, you can apparently adjust the the sight, which is good because it's currently very off, um, and I I will have to tinker with that and actually sight it in, but. Uh, I'm just, I cannot tell you how pleased I am with this. It is just so super, super cool. All right, back to the bench. Right, final thoughts. Both of these kits are absolutely awesome. I should come as no surprise to anyone that I'm a huge fan of Select Fire as a concept because it gives you more versatility, especially in things like HVZ where you don't have to worry about dumping all your ammunition on accident. You can go select, you know, three round burst, single shot, but be able to go all the way up if you need to do suppressing fire and hose a horde or whatever. Um, so I love that both of these have that. The Strife is just still one of the best platforms for modding. It, it probably always will be, it's a sh um, just because of how versatile it is, how many kits like this exist for it. I think I've got at least three or four different iterations of kits like this now. Um, and they're all a little bit different. They all have different prices. They all have different features. So, you know, pick the one you want. This is the standard one, has slightly fewer features, doesn't have the display. You can make changes, but it's a little more difficult. But obviously the price reflects that. This kit is amazing. That, that HUD system with ammo counting and your voltmeter and tells you what your mode is and all sorts of things that it does and the sheer number of adjustable settings. Um, you can adjust the, the FPS, you can adjust the rate of fire, you can adjust all of that. Your burst modes can be adjusted. Uh, it can be, uh, it looks like it actually does have a USB port, uh, presumably for updating software, flashing software, or you can set your settings on your computer. It has a 32 gig um, SD card on the board, presumably just because of how much software there is on that thing. and. Uh, like I said, there was some kind of a game mode I accidentally activated at one point. I don't know how, and I haven't been able to figure out how to turn it back on. But uh, it was making noise and shooting little lasers, and I assume it was some kind of a video game thing where it it sensed where you were, and that's how you moved around and looked at targets. It Because it, it can detect side to side, up and down, twist, all of that. It, it demonstrates all of that, which is pretty nifty. I do need to adjust the... Uh, the sight picture, because it's definitely way high right now, but that's easy enough to do. Uh, ergonomics on this one, the, the selector switch being all the way up here is an odd choice. I don't think it would have been difficult for them to, you know, 
mount it on this one i didn't actually cut the hole but what you do is you drill a hole and then the selector switch is right there which if you're right-handed is perfect if you're left-handed it's a little less perfect but you can still get to it where with this one if it being all the way up here if you're right-handed you you let go with your left hand and and you can adjust it well enough if you're left-handed you can reach up uh, and switch it uh, but it's still kind of an odd situation and they had you know it, it seems weird that they wouldn't i don't know put it up here or up here or maybe they the, the internals don't allow it or they just didn't want to i don't know um but i love it the other thing that i, I think i mentioned earlier on is the fact that they went with red the you know the rapid strike was usually blue there is also an orange variant if they made it either blue or orange it would have been i don't know why they went with red um, or why the internals on this one were purple. Not that that matters, but, you know, maybe that's just the filament they had. But, uh, obviously, it looks like it's all held together with screws, so like I said, I'll take it apart and paint it when I actually do integrate it into a final build. This was really throw it together so that I can test the features, so that I can review the product, so that they will send me more stuff. Um, I definitely plan to use this for a more complicated build. Uh, whether I'll use it for a big one I've been planning for quite some time, or whether I will put it on a smaller one, I don't know. This will probably end up in my, uh, I will probably put it on the, the strife that has my Campbell's Nerfworks orange kit. Uh, and have a really nice um, HVZ, screws just falling out of it, HVZ blaster. So, yeah, both of these kits, absolutely awesome. I highly recommend them. Links will be down in the description. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Hoo-ah! Thank you too.